Open de Cardenales, tampoco en el de los Leones. Batazo grande por la derecha. La bola se va, se va, se va. Y se fue. De cuadrangular. Celta, es un gusto saludarles por aquí. Los invito a que se suscriban porque además es gratis al canal de YouTube de Deep Rider. Tenéis un beso. Durante esta cuarentena le hemos dedicado mucho espacio al tema de lo que fue las, el equipo que Cardenales de Lara construyó a finales de los 90. No es para menos, fue un gran equipo el que organizó en aquel momento la gerencia crepuscular y entre ellos hubo jugadores que hoy son leyendas, incluso miembros del Salón de la Fama, como es el caso del fallecido lanzador Roy Halladay, entre otros que, por ejemplo, lograron una serie mundial en rol protagónico, como Luis Ojo, Kelvin Escobar, que llegó a ganar 19 partidos en las grandes ligas, y así con otra lista de jugadores, no quiero mencionarlos a todos porque quizás se me olvide alguno, pero... En medio de todas estas entrevistas especiales que hemos realizado, la verdad que me han escrito muchísimo para que pudiera dar con una de esas grandes figuras que trajo Cardenales de Lara a finales de los 90, incluso al principio de esa década, y que fueron parte importante de los tres títulos que consiguieron los barquis y metanos en aquel momento. Uno de ellos, por supuesto, fue Mark Witten. Nuestro invitado de hoy aquí en The Beat Writer al espacio al cual le damos la más cordial bienvenida. Yo soy Marcos Grunfeld, autor de este canal de YouTube. Es un placer para mí estar de nuevo con todos ustedes hoy para traerles esta especial entrevista, conversación o tertulia, como quieran llamarlo, con el ex Grande Liga de los Azulejos de Toronto, Indios de Cleveland, Medias Rojas de Boston. Estuvo con varios equipos, la verdad en las mayores, y tuvo varios logros allá también en la, en la Gran Carpa, llegó a dar más de 100 honrones en las mayores, y hoy lo vamos a recibir, estamos esperando que se conecte aquí en nuestra transmisión de Zoom. Mientras lo hace, quiero recordarles a ustedes que nos pueden apoyar de dos maneras aquí en The Beat Writer. La primera, la más importante, la gratuita, es que se suscriban a mi canal de YouTube. ¿Cómo hacerlo? Van a la parte de abajo de la pantalla, presionan el botón suscribirse y ahí también le dan a la campanita que está al lado para que les lleguen las notificaciones cuando subamos un nuevo video y también pueden ayudarnos suscribiéndose a nuestra cuenta de Patreon. Con la contribución que ustedes nos hagan reciben algunos beneficios y también acceden al contenido exclusivo, pueden ver los videos primeros allí antes que aparezcan en YouTube. Lo pueden hacer sin cortes de publicidad y lo, lo hacen unas horas antes de que aparezca en YouTube. Así que tienen algunos privilegios y nos apoyan de las dos maneras a seguir creciendo aquí en The Beat Writer. Gracias a todos por su sintonía. Ahorita sí, vamos a darle la bienvenida al ex Grande Liga estadounidense y ex pelotero jardinero de los Cardenales de Lara, Mark Witten, quien se conecta con nosotros desde los Estados Unidos. First of all, thank you for accepting the invitation, Mark, and it's a pleasure for me to having you today. Uh, the first question I, I have for you is what are you doing right now? I, I know that you own your own loan service, but, uh -huh. uh, but uh, are you involved with baseball too, or are you out of baseball at, at all? Yeah, I'm actually, I, I do my loan service during the day, um, but in the afternoon, I, I uh, coach some kids. I have a travel ball team that I'm working with. And I'm also doing high school baseball here in Tampa. Uh, do you miss baseball, Mark? No, I mean, I, I'm still involved, you know, even, yeah. even with the kids, with kids. So, you know, it's, it still keeps me interested, you know, for his plan. No, I don't miss playing. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, I still watch it a little bit here and there, but not like back in the day. <laughs> Mark, eh, 
I, I told you that a lot of people remember you very well here in Venezuela. What, what that meant for you that the people still remember you? Uh, it, was, it was good times back then, and I really enjoyed playing in Venezuela. Uh, you know, we brought, brought a lot of championships there when I played there. And, uh, and just the fans in general were great. You know, that's, that's what I miss about it more so than anything is just the fans and how excited they are when we play during the winter. You know, and uh, it was just a good time all around. Do you came to Venezuela to visit after you play baseball or you don't came at all? No, I haven't been there since I played baseball. I mean, I'd love to, but you know, right now it's kind of hard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> how, was the, how was your idea to come to Venezuela to play? I know that Toronto have a, a deal with the Cardinals de Lara, but uh, how that idea come to you to come to came here to Venezuela to play baseball at first the, but the first time was in the 1998 right it was uh, you know it was just basically through the Blue Jays and the deal that they had which you know it, and it turned out to work out great for me because it gave me a lot more chance chance to play baseball during the winter you know when usually when you come home you know you don't do anything so And I think it helped me become a better player by coming down there to play. The first time that they told you that you have to came here to play baseball, what did you thought about about it, and uh, how what, how do you remember your your first time here in Venezuela? Uh, it was just something different. I've, I've never I had never left the country before, so it was new and exciting, um, and it was just a joy just to learn a new language. You know, I learned a lot. For his, uh, speaking Spanish and you know all of that type of stuff, it was it was interesting. You know, I had to, I had to learn how to count. I had to learn how to count the believers, uh, all of it. You know, it, it was fun. <laughs> Do you speak Spanish or? Uh, I speak a little bit. I can I can <laughs> get my point across. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember your first trip to Venezuela? How was that? And what do you thought when you arrived to Venezuela to Barquisimeto? No, I mean, I'm, I'm a real low-key guy, so I didn't really think much of it. It was just a different culture. It's just something that you have to get used to. You know, like, just like if you were to come, when you come to the States, you had to get used to being around different people, different different cultures. So that's all it was, you know. When, when you arrived to Venezuela and, and you see, uh, and you saw, sorry, uh, Rich Hill, uh, um, sorry, Glen Allen Hill, um, Derek Bell, T Tony Castillo, And those guys that play with you in, in Toronto, uh, that 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 uh, make it easier, or I mean, it makes it easier. You know, even even the guys that were from Venezuela, they played in Toronto too. You know, like yeah. Soho and Robert Perez. A lot of those guys, I know a lot of those guys as well. So it's it's always easy when uh, you know you have friends and people that you've been around to to kind of help you out and you kind of grow together. I read that you have a. A great friendship with Derek Bell. That uh, you you came here together. Uh, uh, it was a, a plan together to come here to Venezuela. You know the the Cardinals wanted young players, and we were just the young players that they chose. You know, um, you know, even with uh, my, one of my best friends there that came, that was Willie Banks, and he came there with us one year and, and helped us win the championship. And uh, you know. It's the Cardinals that kind of choose the players, and we just have to kind of agree to go. That year, in Venezuela, was a, uh, have uh, Venezuela had some political problems. Uh, there was a, a an episode in Caracas when when the people went to the street, and 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 there was a, a political, very difficult political situation here. Do you hear that on on the news that year and? That uh, made made you some uh, give you some some, some thoughts to, to came here to Venezuela or or you don't hear about that? No, I didn't really worry about it. You know, it was it was all about just going to play baseball, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, there's always going to be political dissension amongst people. Sometimes you just kind of it's part of what our culture is. Sometimes, so we just deal with it and move on. My main objective there was to play baseball. Do you remember your first your first day here in Barquis, in Barquisimeto and your debut? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> you know, it, was, it was a good time. The stadium was packed. 
people sitting in the, on the fence in the grandstands. It was great. You you came here in four four seasons with Cardinals and you won it all in the four seasons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was great, man. It seemed like every year we every year I came down there, we always won championships. Which is you know, which is good. And that rivalry against Leones was was very good because all the finals were were against Leones. How yeah. do you remember that? I remember that was uh, those were good. Those were good games. You know, a lot of a lot of talking and fighting and back and forth. You know, they were exciting times. But you know, what made it more exciting that we won. So you know, it was a good time. I know that you play for a lot. Uh, for a great managers in, in Venezuela, in the United States, sorry. I know that you have a, a great career in, in, in MLB, but as a young player, you came here and you, and you played for Domingo Carrasquel. Uh, Domingo Carrasquel, Carrasquel has a, a great name here in, in, in baseball in Venezuela. And mm -hmm. he came from a family that is uh, full of, of talented players in, in Major League and Venezuela. Actually, the first player in Venezuela was Alejandro Carrasquel. What Domingo Carrasquel meant for you, it meant something for you? Yeah, he was a good manager. I enjoyed playing for Domingo. He, he, you know, he kept everybody loose. You know, I always wanted you to have fun, but at the same time, he wanted, you know, we want to win. You know, and uh, he, was, he was great. You know, he had, I remember going to parties at his house and, you know, having, the camaraderie of the team being there and just having a good time. Uh, what did you learn from, from that final and, and the uh, desire that to came back to Venezuela and win the championship that Cardenales hasn't won a championship back then? Yeah, but we were, we were, we were trying to change the culture of yeah. the championship. So, you know, when you win one, you always want to come back and, you know, try to defend your championship. And that's what we did. You know, we were fortunate enough to win it like the next four or five years. So, you know, it was just a matter of just uh, wanted to, to be good and stay good, and that's what we did. Mike, when, when you came back, when you came back to the United States after that final, it was difficult to took the decision to come back to Venezuela, or, or you, was, uh, uh, you was decided to come, to come back the next year to, to win that championship? that you won't be able to win in, in, the, in the 89? No, it wasn't a difficult decision at, at all. You know, it, it was a way of, like I said, a way of playing and defending a championship. And then I'm, I'm still getting experience playing baseball. And that was the main goal. And that's, and that's always the goal. When, when, when young guys come down to Venezuela to play, it's, it's about playing baseball and trying to better yourself as a player. You know, and you also better yourself as a person because you have to learn a new culture. And when you came back, what do, what do you remember from that second season and, and the final with with Leones again and and finally took the championship? It, it was the first championship for for Cardinales in in the franchise history, so it was a special, right? Yeah, well, the first one is always special, but you know that just makes it that sets the table for the next year, which is, you know we came back and did it again the next year. No, it's just uh, it's exciting to win. It, it was that team was a dream team for you because for the names that that had that team. Uh, yeah, we had a lot of good players like Mike Timlin. We had pitchers that you know that had good big league careers as well. Um, you know, it's always good to play with guys like even Glenn Allen here, all of them. You know, to have guys that played in big leagues to let you know you're playing with some good talent. In that final, you, you was a key player because you hit a triple against Urbano Lugo. And that happened after you, you, you had an, an error in the, in the right field in a, in a, in a play. So, so that, that moment was special for you. And uh, when you hit that triple, uh, Derek Bell came to home. And, and, and that was the, the key run for in, that, in, that, in that final. Yeah, I think that was the only run in that final. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it, it was a good game, man. So one play, you know, decisive, timely hitting, you know, that's the way championships are won. You know, you just play a close game and whoever comes out on top, 
you know, makes the big play at the end is the teams that comes out with the championship. And that's what we did. Specifically, that uh, at bat against Urbano Lugo, do you remember that? Because Urbano was the, the pitcher that threw uh, a no hitter against La Guaira a few years before that, that moment. And he has an uh, important name in, in Venezuela Winter League. Do you, do you remember that at bat specifically? And how do you face, face that at bat? No, it was just a matter of just trying to get a good pitch to hit at that particular moment. And uh, I think he left something up out over the plate and I was able to get good wood on it and, uh, you know, get it to the fence so, so Derek could score. You know, fortunately, then we, our pitcher went out and shut them down to help us get the victory. After that uh, championship uh, against uh, against Leones, that uh, makes something special for you uh, to 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 keep to keep going back to Venezuela. Uh, I mean, it, it was baseball for me. I mean, it, it's special to come back. As you know, you got a chance to win. You always want to go to a team where you got a chance to win. So yeah, it, it was it was a special moment. Mark, after after that, you you spent seven years without coming to to Venezuela. Uh, that was tough for you, or uh, I know that you was focused on, on your MLB career, but but do you miss miss base miss Venezuelan baseball on, 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 over that seven year span? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely miss coming over there, you know. But it was it was time for some younger players to come in. You know, I was an old guy then, you know, so. And it's, and it's basically for younger players to come develop. So, you know, I was one of those guys that if I came over, it was just towards the end or something like that. But, uh, no, I mean, I miss coming over. It was just, but, you know, my time had passed. It was time for the other kids to, to develop. Do you kept in touch with, with the players in that, uh, at that time? Uh, and, and, and do you have the knowledge of what is going on in, in Cardenales over over uh, a few years later, after that championship? No, I, I really didn't keep track of it. You know, it was like, if I wasn't over there, I didn't keep track. But I, there are still people that I knew that was there. They, you know, send me messages about it. And, you know, it was always joy to hear that they were doing well. And when you finally uh, was able to, to maintain your MLB career, you, you have a couple of, 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 important days, of important days in your career. The first day was when when you hit the four home runs, I, I, I think that it was the most special day on your career. Yeah, a very special day. <laughs> you know, that, that isn't something that everybody does, you know. Uh, I was just fortunate to, to be one of the guys that accomplished that feat. How do you remember that day? Because uh, you hit uh, four home runs, that is a, an accomplishment that... Uh, a couple of players that have done in MLBs. Uh, you you also have a uh, 12 RBIs on that game. Yeah, I think the the RBIs is what makes that game special. You yeah. know, to hit four home runs, you know, you have about 16, 17 guys that have done that, yeah. but you only have one guy that's hit four home runs and 12 RBIs in one game. And guess who that guy was? <laughs> <laughs> but but it. it how difficult is, is that, uh, Mark, to... Uh, it's, it's very difficult, man. It isn't something you try to do. It's just something that kind of just happens. You know, it's just, if it was your day to be, to click that day, it was just your day. I mean, nothing you can plan or do or say or anything to make it happen. It just happens. After your third home run, you, you go to, 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 to the home plate. And uh, what do you thought at the moment uh, yeah. I was just, it's just, uh, I didn't try to hit the first three, so <laughs> I just didn't try to hit the fourth one either. It's just a matter of just making good swings and getting good contact, and that's what happened. You know, even the bat boy asked me, was I going to try to hit another home run? I said, well, I didn't try to hit the first three, so why should I? <laughs> and uh, it was, I was just fortunate enough to make a good swing and, and hit the fourth home run. The other accomplishment that I found about your career was that when you was called to pitch in a game in, in, with, with Cleveland. Uh, how was that day for you? You, you, 
You was a pitcher any time in your in your career before that? Well, I pitched in college a little bit, okay. but uh, I hadn't pitched since college. So you know <laughs> that was a that was just a situation where we had played an extra inning game. Yeah. Uh, the day before, and when the pitching was slim, we were getting blown out. So was trying to save our, our, our bullpen and pitching staff, so I was able to go out and try to get three outs. You, you, you. It was difficult because you, you hit a player, you, you give a base on balls, and and, and the bases were were lower, but you uh, was able to strike out the side uh, just with with one run against you. Uh, yeah. I right. they, they 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 swung and missed a couple of times. That's all I can say. You know, you know. After that, I couldn't pick up a ball for about a week. So it it didn't it didn't easy to get on that mound on the pitch. Now it's just a matter of that's something you got to train for. Mark, it was difficult to play for for so many teams. Or, or it was a, it was or you or, or you enjoy it? No, I enjoyed it. You know, you always go out. And it's baseball. And if you enjoy playing baseball, it doesn't matter who you play for, you know, which, and I enjoy playing. Which city do you enjoy the most in MLB? Well, I said I, I bet the teams I played for with the Cardinals and with the Indians, you know, where I played the most and I was just there the longest period of time. So I would have to say the Cardinals and the Indians. It, it was the, the same ex excitement for, uh, I'm talking about the atmosphere in, in MLB, like Venezuela. No, it's, 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 different, it's a different atmosphere. It's a very different atmosphere. The, the Venezuelan league the, is, is their major league, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. their atmosphere is different than the atmosphere in the, in the States. And uh, it's just a different culture and atmosphere. I think in Venezuela, the, the atmosphere is more exciting than it is in the States at times. I think it's like that all the time in Venezuela. And the U.S. is not like that all the time. Do you feel something uh, closer to to the atmosphere, uh, like a uh, uh, Cardenales Leones game, uh, maybe San Luis Cop Cops games or something like that? No, it's, it's, I think the atmosphere is just overall better in Venezuela. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't think nothing can compare to it. And that inspired you to to play better in 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 baseball in general. That, that yeah, kind some, of some, sometimes it does, but you know, it's, it's, when you're playing baseball, you just got to be focused. You can't really hear a lot of that. You, okay. you, know, you just got to try to stay focused. After that seven year span that, that you just don't play in Venezuela, how do you decide to come back after seven years? I think in, in 1997. Mm -hmm. uh, just, I just needed to play more baseball. And it was at a time, you know, because I wasn't playing every day anymore so I just needed to try to stay active and play more baseball and the opportunity came for me to come so so I did. When you came back do you remember how the the, the fans received you in, in Venezuela in Barquisimeto? How? It was great man they gave me a standing ovation <laughs> <laughs> so you know even though I was with a different team they, they still remembered me you know all the good stuff that I've done for the Cardinals. That team was better Right, that the first Cardinals that you that you that you was uh, that you went uh, that you went to play with. Uh, I mean, all the teams I played there were pretty good, so I can't say one was better than the other. You know, it's just a matter of just you know playing together. But when you when you uh, see back then that you play with uh, Luis Soho, Roy Halladay, uh, rest in peace, uh, and that kind of players, Tony Castillo, that also make a great career in, in MLB. What mm -hmm. that meant for you? Uh, it was great, you know, just to get to play, like I said, just to get to play with players that, you know, weren't in the big leagues at the time, but had good big league careers. So it was great to be, play with guys like that. There is a specific, a specific game that you remember the most down here in Venezuela? Uh, no specific game, but I remember a couple specific fights that we had. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I will, I will ask you about that. <laughs> the, the second, the second final uh, against Leones in 1997, in 90, the third final in, uh, in 1997, 
was one of the most uh, exciting series in Venezuela. Uh, how do you remember that that series? I, I remember it just being exciting, just, you know, competitive and both teams wanted to win. You had a lot of good players out there and uh, it was just a good time. In that final, uh, for Cardenales, play Roy Halladay, yourself, uh, Alex Delgado, and another player, Rich Ojo, uh, Miguel Cairo, I think. Uh, a lot of a lot of good players at West Chamberlain, which I talk I talk with him too. And, and Leones had Bobby Abreu, Roger Sereño, uh, Uge Turbina. That that was a great series for for both teams. Huh? Yeah, it was great, man. Right? You know, like I said, very competitive. And you know, when you get a bunch of good players playing. In both sides, you want to win, so that makes the series a whole lot better. And that fight against Uge Turbina, uh, how do you remember that? Uh, I just remember, I just remember being real tired afterwards. That's all. Just, <laughs> you know, it, nobody really got hurt. It was just more of a lot of scuffling and pushing and shoving. So, but still, the fact that it was it was exciting, you know, just to get out there and because you, you have to defend your teammates, you have to help your teammates, and that's what we did. He hit Derek Bell, and and you was you was very mad at, at the time. I I watched a video on, on YouTube recently, uh, and you was very mad at the time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just defending my teammate, man. It's, you know, really didn't wasn't really upset. Else, I might have kept going, but you know, like it's, it's you really don't want to do that. But it's just something that just happened. It was a baseball fight only. Yeah, that's that's basically all it was. Once once we, you know you see each other again, it's water under the bridge, so to speak. Do do you I spoke with Uget uh, after that? No, I hadn't I hadn't talked to him a while, but I know him and Robert Perez became good friends after that. Yeah. So, <laughs> Mark, uh, the the West Chamberlain walk of heat uh, that was a, a very good moment for Cardinales. Uh, it because also it was her first two consecutive championship. Uh, how do you remember that 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 heat? I remember it being a walk off heat. That's I mean, <laughs> it was exciting, you know. It's uh, when you win a game like that, it's great to to win it at the end like that. What do you uh, what do you enjoy the most from from Venezuela uh, besides baseball? Uh, what do you uh, used to to do in 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 the country in the job in the off days for for say something. Now we had some friends that we used to go up in the mountains and just hang out sometimes. Uh, you know, we I think we even you know we just we used to just hang out and just just have barbecues or just go hang out and just do nothing. You know, those, those were the good times. So. Do Do you have any special friendship with any of of your teammates back then? No, no, nothing, nothing special. Just, just normal friendships, man. You know, you, when you're playing baseball, you kind of lose touch with friends sometimes. You know, you still know each other, but everybody kind of goes their separate ways. Because when I spoke with with Luis, he remembered you very well, and, and he said that you used to to sing in, in the in the Duga, in the clubhouse and with 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 uh, with West. And but <laughs> I don't know if you if you remember those moments. <laughs> Yeah, I don't remember those moments. <laughs> you don't remember? No, never remember those, but yeah, they say so. I say okay. <laughs> Why did you decide to to came back with Tiburones and not and not with Cardenales? Well, it was uh, like I said, it was just an opportunity to play baseball. Okay. Um, you know, the Cardinals didn't need anybody yet. Now. They didn't have space for anybody, and Tiburones did. So that's what I did. Did you try to came back with Cardenales after that? No, I was really no, I hadn't tried to go back since. You know, like I said, it's it's mostly for the younger players to come play winter baseball. Uh, do you feel? Do you felt at the time the same way with with Tiburones, or or it, or, or it wasn't the same feeling that you have that you had with with Cardinales? <clears throat> no, it wasn't the same with the Cardinales. Something a little different, you know, different area, different culture, different people. Everything's a little different. Thank you, Mark, for, for accepting the invitation and for giving those minutes with, with you. 
I hope that you enjoyed the the interview and and remember everything about Venezuela. Okay, all right. Thanks for having me. Fue Mark Witten, ex jardinero de los Cardenales de Lara y también antiguo Grande Liga de los Azulejos de Toronto, Indios de Cleveland, Media Roja de Boston, Phillies de Filadelfia y varios equipos adicionales. Espero que ustedes hayan disfrutado de esta charla que sostuvimos hoy, porque bastante que me la pidieron y espero que nos apoyen compartiendo el video a través de sus plataformas de WhatsApp, de su Twitter, de, de su Instagram y en todas las redes sociales. Por cierto, no he enviado más saludos porque no me han etiquetado más, así que estoy pendiente de que puedan compartir mis videos en sus redes sociales para así poder mandarles saludos. Eso es todo lo que tienen que hacer, tomarle una captura al video que más les gusta, ponerlo en sus redes sociales, etiquetarme y yo les mando saludos al final de los videos. Háganlo para que reciban sus respectivos saludos, aunque los próximos episodios ya están completamente grabados, pero ahí vemos cómo lo organizamos. Yo soy Marcos Grunfeld, gracias por la sintonía aquí en David Writer, mi canal de YouTube. Son siempre bienvenidos a este espacio, sus sugerencias, comentarios sobre las entrevistas que estamos realizando y si quieren ver algún invitado especial específicamente, pues lo pueden dejar abajo en los comentarios. Los invito a suscribirse a mi canal de YouTube, es muy sencillo, es gratis, solamente debajo de la pantalla del video tienen que darle al botón de suscribirse, allí después le dan a la campanita que está al lado para que les lleguen las notificaciones cada vez que subamos un nuevo video, suscríbanse, suscríbanse para que nos sigan apoyando a seguir creciendo. Ya estamos llegando a 16.000 suscriptores, así que espero continuar con el apoyo de ustedes. Y también aquellos que tengan la posibilidad de ir a patreon.com barra de Bitwriter, como lo ven en pantalla, pues allí pueden suscribirse y recibir beneficios. Ahí también pues nos pueden apoyar económicamente en este proyecto y a cambio reciben contenido exclusivo que estamos publicando allí, por ejemplo, el reporte diario de lo que hacen todos los venezolanos en las grandes ligas. Antes de finalizar, quiero decirles que también pueden suscribirse a Patreon en este botón que ven acá. Aquí se pueden suscribir al canal y de este otro lado les dejo dos videos para que sigan en sintonía de The Beat Writer. Nos vemos en una próxima historia. <música>